Hey, didn't see you there. Nick is the name and delivering sensational, motivational, inspirational speeches is my game. I've just recently graduated from Springfield Central High School and I'm currently bothering people up at UMass. So, how about we start off by breaking the ice? Oh wait, now that I think about it, that's probably not the best icebreaker. But no, really, seriously, let's get the ball rolling. <sighs> okay, so, how's everyone doing today? Good? Good? Really? Really? Huh? Wrong! Now what if I only told you you only think you're doing good, but in fact, you're doing bad? Yes, I know. Pfft. Work with me here, people. No, I'm sorry to say you're doing anything but good. I would even go as far to say you're feeling quite awful, really. This could be the worst day of your life. An absolute nightmare. This is like going to school and finding out you forgot to study for that big test, which is today. Then realizing you also forgot to put on pants this morning. Only to then pee yourself out of fear, coincidentally in front of your biggest crush, who just so happens to be making out with that kid who always bullies you, who then walks over and christens you with the incredibly clever nickname, Captain Piss Pants, a name which sticks with you all the way until senior yearbook. Yeah, now take all that and multiply it by two. Yeah, that bad. Things could not get any worse for you. Poor you. How are you going to pull yourself out of this sad little mess you've gotten yourself into? Let's find out. Midnight is a very interesting time. I've always loved it. Sure, I should be sleeping, but midnight is considered reasonably early for someone my age. <laughs> You're going to bed at 10 p.m.? Pfft. Okay, Grandpa. Check out this guy. Look at me. I have to get up early because I have responsibilities. Ugh, <laughs> loser. All the cool stuff happens at night. At midnight, most people are in their beds, the lights are out, there are very few cars on the street, it is silent. The mistakes you've made throughout the day are forgotten, the mysteries of tomorrow remain untouched, and all your responsibilities seem to drift away, leaving room for the chance of solemn contemplation. Or, you know, you can just watch a Netflix. Midnight is a time when things appear their darkest, and life's challenges can be viewed in their purest form. It is a time to regroup and begin anew or, you know, watch Netflix. Either or, both good choices, it's really up to you. <laughs> now, let's get back to you. No, wait, that's not right. There we go, this is you. You're sad, remember? Don't forget that, it's important. Things are not going as well as they could be for you, are they? No, of course not, because your life is terrible. But the question is, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to feel better? How are we going to get unsad? I think that's a word, it's probably a word, don't worry about it. There's two ways you can approach this. One, you can wallow in your own despair like some angst-filled Shakespearean character. Oh, woe is me! Wherefore should I be the one to suffer? My life, thou art like the spring flowers under winter's vile grasp. Oh, alas! 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 Thank you, thank you. You could do that, or you could take all that pent-up regret anger and sadness and direct it towards a passion. Retool those emotions and use them as your fuel to change this wretched little predicament you're in. In order to show you this, I would like to share with you my own story. Breathless, so amazed by the world and all its endless beauty and possibilities. At least that's what I must have been feeling to come out of the womb not breathing. Within seconds, I was thrown into a tiny glass container and had my body filled with tubes. I thought I was just supposed to be a spank on the butt and you're good to go. I didn't recall signing up for this. I knew I should have read those licensing terms and conditions before clicking agree, but honestly, who does that? That's how they get you. I was only in this world for a few minutes, and I'd already met my greatest enemy, my lungs. You see, luck isn't exactly something that runs in the family. Guess it's just not in our genes. If there was a competition for being unlucky, we would unfortunately lose in the last few seconds because something lucky happened, taking us out of the lead. For the rest of my childhood, I would be in an intense death match with my own personal health. Step right up, step right up for the most incredible and anticipated breathtaking battle of the century. Let's get ready to rumble! In this corner, we have weighing in at roughly 100-ish pounds, paler than the ghost with the flu, more wiry than an epileptic fishing pole. We have Nicholas Gubbins, woo! Yeah, I love him, he's great! And in this corner, we have weighing in at just a couple of pounds. He'll knock the breath out of you like bronchitis. He's not pneumonia to this. The wizard of wheezing, the earl of everlasting rasping and gasping. Let's all give your biggest whoop whooping cough to Nick's lungs, boo! Boo, I strongly dislike him. I wasn't a normal kid. 
I think that's the hardest thing I had to come to terms with. In elementary school, I watched as all the other kids would run and play, but if I tried to do the same within minutes, I would keel over and start coughing like a chain-smoking blues singer in a jazz nightclub. Not being able to keep up with those around me quickly alienated me from all the normal kids, and at the time, that's all I wanted to be. I didn't want to be treated differently. I didn't want to stand out. I just wanted to feel like I belonged. As time progressed, my condition worsened. What started off as what seemed to be a bad case of asthma soon grew into something much worse. By the time middle school arrived, I began collecting new diseases as if they were badges for a Boy Scout. I was soon missing school weeks at a time. I know with all your kids back home are probably thinking, free vacation? Whoa! But that was not the case. I spent most of my days bedridden. I was basically a regular at my local doctor's office. I would, everyone there knew me by name. It's like I was a celebrity. I would walk in and they'd be like, hey, it's Nick. What can I get you? The usual? Okay, here's uh, two prescriptions of antibiotics and some ibuprofen. Ooh, how about some uh, steroids and a new inhaler, huh? Every time I went there, it seemed like I was getting diagnosed with some new disease. Oh, looks like it's bronchitis. Uh-oh, now it's the flu. Oh, no, got pneumonia. Whoop, looks like you got pneumonia again. I got pneumonia over six times. Seven times, to be exact. In the old days, if you got pneumonia, they would just hand you your tombstone and say it was nice knowing you. <sighs> That's a lot of tombstones. I could have my own personal graveyard. And it's not like I was going out frolicking in the rain without a jacket on or shoving my face into a bucket of ice water. I was just trying to live my life. I was known to pretty much everyone as the kid who coughed all the time. I remember all the countless angry stares I would get as my coughing would interrupt them while they were taking a quiz. It was almost like a superpower, the way in which I could push others away without saying a single word. Behold, young readers, to the newest superhero on the block, be amazed that with one gust of wind from his mouth, he can make those in the desks near him magically move away. Be stunned with his amazing feats of repulsion, drives the others to the opposite side of the hallway. Is it a bug? Is it a cold? No, it's messed up lung boy, coming soon to a theater near you. Many times, they thought I didn't notice it, but I did. Many times when I would go into one of my routine coughing fits, I'd always hear the same things. Like a cashier who gets the, well, I guess it's free joke when an item doesn't ring up correctly at the checkout aisle. They would say things like, why are you always sick, man? <laughs> Need some water? <laughs> there he goes again. Stop dying already. What maybe seemed to them as a harmless joke would just be another constant reminder of how broken I was. Each remark was just another knife in my heart, slowly tearing away any remaining happiness I had. I was born into midnight. My entire life was encapsulated in darkness. To me, dawn was just a fairy tale, an idea, just a figment of one's imagination that things could actually get better. I had lived in darkness for so long that my mind began to warp its own surroundings. That's just how you think we are in that state. Midnight can create a sense of unfriendliness to everything around you. What was originally just a branch tapping on the window now seems like a terrible monster trying to get in. The once cool and calming breeze now howls against your eardrums. Hobbies become chores and friends become strangers. You feel overwhelmed as life becomes too daunting a task to take on, and the world doesn't seem like that great inviting place it used to be. Entering my first year of high school, my lungs had me on the ropes. Just a few months in, and I was as bad as I had ever been. One day, I made the very stupid decision to try and go out and run and have a good time. <laughs> Silly me, right? Within minutes, I was on the ground, unable to breathe. After being brought to the hospital and having many tests done, the doctors soon discovered that over half of my lung was blackened with infection. You could say they were black as midnight, eh? Keeping with the theme, am I right? But anyways, this was bad. Really bad. Like, finding out your favorite TV show was canceled bad. The doctors told me that half of my lung would have to be removed to prevent the infection from spreading even more. So, within a month, I had to say goodbye to my young high school career and prepare to undergo surgery. My time in the hospital was not pleasant, but honestly, when is it ever? Come for the fun, stay for the food, am I right? <sighs> I could tell you how I cried myself to sleep every night, whether it be from physical or emotional pain. I could tell you the many times I thought about finding a way to end it right then and there. I could tell you the various tubes they had shoved in my body, or the time my lung collapsed, or the second time. I could tell you the time that I had to be restrained because I just couldn't take it anymore. I could also tell you about all the countless patients, all fighting their own unique battles just as I was fighting my own. I could tell you about the courage and optimism they showed, one I wished I could emulate. 
Or I could do that thing that spokespeople do, where they list off all the things they could tell you, and in the process still tell you everything they wanted to. I could, but I don't want to spend time on giving some depressing sob story, which is kind of ironic because that's exactly what I've done for the past five minutes. But in the hospital, I learned an important truth from those around me: that life can sometimes suck, a lot. But just because life sucks, that doesn't mean you have to agree with it. You can do whatever the hell you want. One of my favorite quotes is by Oscar Wilde: "Life is too important to be taken seriously." <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to let all the crappy things in life get me down anymore, and more importantly, I wasn't going to intentionally put myself down because I didn't feel good enough. For all I could care, the old me died in that hospital. All those terrible thoughts, all those sleepless nights, all those feelings of worthlessness were gone. I was born anew and given a second chance, and this time I was going to take life by the reins and actually do something meaningful with it for once. With my newfound spirit, I discovered a passion for theater and a love for the stage. And I know what you're thinking. You talking in front of people? Eh, I don't see it. I also decided to join the swim team, which, if you've been following the story so far, seems like the exact opposite of what I should have been doing. That's like going to Dunkin' Donuts and ordering a bagel. That action is incorrect. You just don't do that. With doctors and family members telling me to take it easy, I decided to push myself to new limits with my newfound mindset. Those first few weeks of practice, I was awful. But I kept to it, buckled down week after week, gave it my all, tried my hardest, and really pushed myself to the limit. And you know what? By the end of it all, I still sucked. I was so bad <laughs> at swimming; it was definitely not my calling. I mean, like, yeah, I got better, but not good. <laughs> but that's not the point. The feeling I got when I was able to keep up with others around me was amazing. Sure, I was different, but that didn't matter anymore. All those years ago, it wasn't those around me who alienated me, but my own fear of alienation that drove me to isolate myself. The friends that I made while pushing myself to try new things are some of the best people I've ever met. So now, I will take everything I learned from others and myself and continue through life one breath at a time. No matter what happens, you can't let the darkness overwhelm you. You may be thinking, well. Hey Nick, you're so handsome and a constant source of inspiration. But how am I supposed to feel happy when everything around me feels so hopeless? Good question. To explain this, I would like to tell you what I learned from my own personal experiences. The change between happiness and sadness is not controlled by some flick of a switch, but instead is a very gradual change. Don't listen to those people who come up to you and say, "Well, if you're sad, then just like stop being sad." Oh my God, you genius! You cured depression. How did I not think of that? Ah, no, that is the equivalent of going up to a person with the flu and saying, "Well, if you want to stop being sick, then just get better." Depression is a sickness just like the flu. It can't be cured immediately, but there are some things you can do to help speed up the process. That's why I've come up with these tips to help with your desatification. First off, <laughs> cry if you need to. There's nothing humiliating about crying. Never be afraid to show your real emotions. Keeping all your feelings pent up like that is a recipe for disaster. Need help crying? Try reading any book with a dog's name in the title. Spoiler alert: it never seems to end well for the dog. <laughs> Second, find some ways to blow off steam. Go out and run at night, or find something soft to punch, like a pillow or a punching bag, or Donald Trump's stupid face. Third. Listen to music. Start off with something sad to reflect your own emotions, like、uh, Sarah McLaughlin's "In the Arms of the Angels." Think about all those sad puppies slowly looking up into the camera, and how we can help them. And for just seven cents a day, we can just do、oh, those poor puppies. <laughs> <laughs> and then work your way up to something really happy, like.、Uh, It's fun to stay at the YMCA or、uh, celebrate good times. Come on! Or、uh, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. You guys are happy! Yay! I did it! All the while, sing at the top of your lungs and dance your heart out. And don't worry about how you look, because I'm basically the human embodiment of the Titanic on the dance floor, and I couldn't care less. Fourth, don't you dare think that the answer is going to be found in some pill or at the bottom of a bottle. Unless that pill is made entirely out of chocolate, and that bottle is a bottle of Mr. Bubble all the time bath, I don't want to hear it. Fifth, find a distraction. Take a cooking class or something. 
It'll be hard to focus on all the sad things in life when the meal you're preparing suddenly bursts into flames because you found out the hard way what happens when you put aluminum foil in the microwave. I wasn't the only one who did that, right? Or if uh, cooking isn't your thing, like me, go out and force yourself to hang out with your friends or find someone to talk to. Because no matter what happens, there will always be someone there for you, always a shoulder to cry on. Next, find that thing that makes you smile and do it a lot. I've been going through a rough patch for quite some time, but coming here today and making you guys smile, it makes me smile, and I love it. So I implore you to go out there and do the things that you love. Finally, take the time to find the positives in every situation. I know it can be hard sometimes, but if you really dig deep enough, you can find a bright side. You lost your job? Well, you didn't like it anyway, and now you can do something that you do love. You caught the flu? Well, now you can finally binge watch that new season of Orange is the New Black on Netflix. Your house just burned down? Uh, s'mores! You can make s'mores! <laughs> Take all that raw emotion you feel and have it drive you to become better. Are you getting picked on for being a nerd? We take all that repressed anger and you push yourself to become the best damn nerd you can be. And then later on in life, when you're a super successful, you can go up to that kid who always bullied you and be like, hey, hey you, you treated me like crap all throughout high school and I have just one thing to say. Yeah, can I have a number three with a large fries and a Dr. Pepper? Thanks. Life is always gonna get tough, but that is what makes it so great. It's okay to admit that we're all really gloomy, depressing messes sometimes. Sadness is a vital part of human growth. It's a necessary yin to happiness is yang. Just remember that whenever you feel sad or down, that there must have been something so great and so fantastic before to make you feel that way. And get excited because that feeling will come again. You have to take the ups with the downs in this roller coaster of a life. Because if you think about it, a roller coaster that only goes up can get dull pretty fast. No matter how dark, how cold, how frightening it may be, the night will always end and will bring forth a brand new day filled with endless opportunities to make unforgettable memories. And to those who lock themselves in their room, denying that things will ever change, the dawn will never come and they were meant to live in darkness. Remember, the light will always be there waiting outside your window. It's just up to you to open your curtains and let the light in. Thank you. <laughs>